Hey everybody, I'm Jana. Thanks for checking out this video. Today we're going to be talking about the spirits from Spirit Island that I haven't played yet and why. I know this sounds like a oh, weirdo video. If you're not familiar with Spirit Island, you may think, why would I be interested in listening to her talk about things she haven't played yet? Well, Spirit Island is a cooperative game and the theme is all about these supernatural spirits that are incredibly powerful and they are trying to keep their island from being invaded and colonized. It's a complicated game with all of these nuances and spirits. It's a game that has incredible replayability. It has a lot of versatility and the spirits lend to different types of players. There's, there's 24 in all and I've played a little bit over half. And I think it may be interesting to the Spirit Island community to think about what different players gravitate to and what they kind of are turned off by and avoid. And also, I wanted to reach out because the people that tend to watch my Spirit Island videos comment with really helpful feedback. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for some of those viewers to really shine with their helpful feedback, especially in regards to the spirits that I am intimidated to play. Now, before I get distracted, which I easily do, there's the subscribe button in the corner and you can click it. Then you just click it. And then if you want it, all the notifications, you can click the bell or you can click, you know, not the bell or the, I don't know. There's too many options there but subscribe because that helps my channel incredibly I never ask because it's so awkward but I'm just telling you it's there in case you missed it because it seems like a lot of you are missing it while I've played Spirit Island a ton of times I've just not gotten to some of these yet other spirits I am just completely intimidated by and some spirits I know I'm just not there yet First we have Finders of Path Unseen. Now this is a very high complexity spirit. And for that reason alone, I tend not to want to play this sort of spirit. Now he, he does a whole lot of interesting things. He is mostly controlling positions of different pieces on the board that do different things. So he can move around presence, Daham, which are the natives, and they're kind of the good guys with us. And then they can move around the colonist. And that is primarily what they're doing. They're manipulating the positions on the board. And this would be a really interesting spirit to play. However, I find that it would probably be this all here is not good for someone who has problems focusing. This is a little too open-ended. Um, this here is a presence track. Normally there's one track going this way and one track going that way. And I wouldn't know where to start. With this so this part intimidates me a lot fractured days split the sky so this is another high complexity spirit that i will probably never play and i'm okay with that and i like the idea of talking about this because i think that maybe there's a stigma out there with our games that we have to master the entirety of it to be a true fan and i'm here to say you don't because this does not look like fun to me. <laughs> he messes around with the idea of time. He has more of an abstract lore about him where he, he operates outside of the, the facets of time that the rest of us do. He also, he really does manipulate the game. He manipulates when certain things can happen. He can make certain lands disappear at different times. And he just has a completely different way of functioning. And I don't think we would win. I don't think we would do well if I was trying to play this spirit. And that's why I say it wouldn't be fun for me. So I would love to hear what you guys think about this spirit. Do you find him an ab abstract? Do you really like what he brings to the game? What have you found that he adds strategically? Um, I'd love to hear feedback on this guy. I'm going to just read the names clearly. So I'm not trying to pretend like I'm memorize them. So this one is Starlight Seeks Its Form. I usually shorten these guys' names, but I know some people don't like when I do that. This is the other very high complexity spirit. And I believe that he was designed in a way so that you could 
play your own spirit your own way. This is probably the ultimate here as far as customizing Spirit Island to your taste. Um, you can choose to do your growth in any way you wish. You have all these different innate powers. For me, as someone who is dyslexic, slow reader, and is highly distracted and really has to zone in when focusing, this would be the absolute worst type of spirit to play. While I think it looks fascinating and I love to see people play this spirit, it's just not the one for me. It's Volcano Luving High, the volcano guy. This is a spirit that is moderate in complexity. I, I played a lot of games with him in and it is so cool when his presence gets built up and he erupts. It is such a climactic part of the game. I love it. So you really have to invest your presence in one big moment in the game and that kind of intimidates me. Um, so anyway, this is a spirit I probably would like to play and will eventually. Lore of the Deep Wildness. So this guy I have actually started to play twice. I did so poorly with him. He's moderate in complexity, and he uses all of the tokens. He uses the Badlands, the Vines, the Beast, and the Disease. And from what I understand, he, he really uh, downgrades the invaders one by one. He'll, he can turn the towns into men and the cities into men, so you can kind of pick them off. But he is limited with terrain. He can only be in inland. I just don't understand what my issue is with this guy. It's not that we lost, it's that it was just going so poorly and we weren't having fun that we just said, let's do a do-over and, and I picked a new spirit to play. Serpent slumbers beneath the island. The number one thing is I don't really like snakes so the theme did not attract me. He has the ability to absorb other people's presence and that allows him to put out more of his presence which doesn't lend to a two-player game which is what I primarily play most of the time. I just don't get the chance to play this with a group very often. And when I do get to play with a group, this just doesn't really draw me in. Next up is the Heart of the Wildfire. And the reason I haven't played him is because I know he puts out a lot of blight. He creates lots of fire and fire, brush fires and stuff are a natural form of blight, which is very thematic. So I really like that idea. Um, but I was just kind of intimidated by the fact that he uses so much blight. He has also a high complexity spirit. So I was kind of afraid of those when I was first getting into Spirit Island. Evan from Being Friends says that this is one of his favorite spirits. This made me look at him twice and think maybe I should give him a try. He says it's a lot of fun to play. Since I've been playing the Jagged Earth expansion and I have become less afraid of blight, I'm just not as intimidated by the fact that I put blight on the board um, where once that was kind of like a big no-no. All right, so now we're getting into some of the older spirits from which you may be a little shocked I haven't played them yet. The first the first one here is uh, Sharp Fangs Behind the Leaves. And this is the spirit that came from the second expansion for Spirit Island Branch and Claw. I love the branch spirit, um, but this is the other one. This was a moderate complexity. My first impression of it was Daniel playing it a few times and just saying he's not that great. It felt like he couldn't really do that much. Um, but with having the paw prints, like the paw tokens, without the event cards, I think this would be pretty fun to play. I really do like playing with the tokens and using them um, with different spirits. So also Luke, Luke Hector from uh, The Broken Meeple says it's one of his favorites and he really enjoyed it. So when I hear other people's feedback, it makes me want to try them. So you guys also let me know, is this a fun one? Should I try it? And this is one of the spirits from the original Spirit Island base game. And this is the bringer of dreams and nightmares. And this guy is scary. <laughs> the artwork is scary. Um, but also he doesn't ever damage the invaders. He only ever creates fear, which is a powerhouse. Like that's so 
important to create fear and get through those fear cards. But the idea of not being able to create damage and whenever you would create damage, you do fear instead, just kind of boggles my mind. Again, he seems like a spirit that would be an asset in a multiplayer game, but for a two player game, I just don't feel like I would be able to do enough with him to play well. And the last spirit that I haven't played successfully, <laughs> the last spirit is Thunder Speaker. I know she's one of the coolest spirits. And my husband's, you know, strategy guide on Thunder Speaker is my most watched video on this channel. So I know she's popular with a lot of Spirit Island people. I, I really want to play her, but she deals so much with the Dahan and I've always been intimidated by dealing with them because I usually just end up killing them. And this is her thing. She's all about, like, she moves with the Dahan. She's, like, with them, heart and soul. And that is how she works. She's moderate complexity. But all of her actions require foresight. You have to deal with your enemy during the build before they ravage. And I've always struggled with that foresight. I played her once unsuccessfully. It was a sort of game where like, Daniel wasn't feeling it. And there was some stressful stuff going on. Our kids were kind of running around and being very needy at the time. And I was asking lots of questions like, what should I do, what should I do? And so it wasn't a fun gaming experience. I think for me to really uh, kind of get the grasp of how I should play her, I should be playing at a lower difficulty level. Okay guys, so those are all the spirits I haven't played. I know, it's a lot. <laughs> but the point is that I still love Spirit Island and I've only played half of them. What does that say? I think I think that is okay and I think that is part of the design that there is a spirit for everybody. So even if you, you know, can't enjoy the every single one, they're all so different. They're kind of like people. We're all different. We all have our strengths and weaknesses and we can all play off of each other. And I feel like Spirit Island truly has captured that. Not every spirit is for every person because, you know, every person's different. So maybe this is just another amazing testimony of how awesome Spirit Island is. Let me know what you think. I love to hear your passion for this game and I love how helpful you are. I often will get comments from people and I'm like, you completely changed my perspective on this aspect of the game because of your comment. So I look forward to those. Keep those comments coming, everybody. I'm growing as a player and I hope you guys are too. Thanks again for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the button. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.